Welcome. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. I am back after not coming on on Monday. I was out camping at my favorite spot, Lost Dutchman State Park, and it was beautiful out there, but it's kind of starting to get a little too warm. So, so we'll uh, see how many trips I can do out there before we bake like in the oven. So I thought we'd dive in and just kind of take a look at what's going on in our spring market. It's not officially spring yet, is it? Um, I don't know. Hard to keep track, but let's take a look here at what's going on. Uh, Monday was not a good day for interest rates. It didn't go up a lot, but uh, hello, Keenan. I want to know how many uh, showings you had this weekend on your new listing. We're at 6.61. Now, it's kind of trending positive, meaning that rates are probably going to go down a little bit today. Now, you can find a mortgage rate lower than 6.61. Six one. This is just a national average, and it's a survey. Good morning, Stephanie. Good to see you again. And so, but they have edged a little bit higher. There's a little movement in the bond market. It's not really volatile, but uh, there's some stuff that went on in Europe that kind of made everybody a little edgy. But here, take a look at this. The uh, listings under contract continue to climb, and I'm seeing that in my seven-day moving average. And you can see here that uh, although it's tiny over here on the right-hand side, we have gone up from 3,100 homes over seven days to 3,300 homes. And uh, not a big jump, 200 homes. But as you can see on the ticker below, current inventory is below 13,000 now. So there's just not a rush to put new homes on the market. Um, and it's affecting... Um, choices out there for you. If you're out there looking to buy a home, there's uh, not much available. And here's the Cromford Market Index kind of starting to edge a little bit higher. And I wanted to put this into perspective too, because everybody likes to look at 2019. So that's the green line down here. Look at this. We're finally starting to reach as far as the Cromford Market Index, the pre-pandemic levels. Interesting. Sean says the rate of change of inventory reduction is increasing. I think let's take another look at that chart. Yeah, 13,000 yikes. Let's look at the actual number of homes that are on the market. I think I pulled it up. Um, I don't think the rate is, you know, we're not getting, what do I want to say? How do I say this? It's not going down faster. It's continuing the same rate, but we are below our 2020 uh, inventory level. Now, right here, and this is where they told us to stay home. So everybody took their homes on the market. Nobody wanted people walking through. So so we can't compare to 2020 at all. So it's always helpful, I think, to go prior to that, go to 2019 and see where we're at. And, see, and, and again, that's the green line. 2019, at this time, we had 17,000 618. I would like to see us above 17,000 with a 5.5 interest rate. If I could snap my finger, that's what I would pull up for everybody. Keenan here talking about his listing said overall it was a good first weekend at four showings and one canceled. Agents said about 12 people came to the open house and got an offer, but too low under list price for me. Hang in there. You got an offer. That means you're going to get another one. Um, Taking a look at average list price per square foot. This one's a little interesting to me in that barely moving up. So we're a little level there. And that's that's a good sign. There aren't as many listings, but at least they're not trying to shoot the prices through the roof here on the average list price. Now, this kind of gets affected a little bit by the high end of the market because they don't tend to list the closer we get to summertime. And the areas that are seeing a decrease right now in uh, in sales are expect as expected are the over fifty five areas. They're they're all packing up, heading home. Especially the Canadians, they have to be out of here. Louis, good morning, um, Louis. Am I saying that right, Louis Bale? So, um, so they got to get back. They can only stay here one hundred and eighty three days, so they have to head out. Now we're looking at. This number that I came across this morning, it's interesting. Housing units under construction, okay? These are the red line is single family houses. Okay, see how that's going down? The blue line is multifamily houses. 
Interesting, huh? Two units or above. So there is a lot of multifamily apartments, uh, build to rent homes going under construction. Now, um, I don't know if they call, count those build to rent homes as uh, multifamily. I don't think they do. So that would be included in that red line. Um, what do you think about listing over Mother's Day weekend? Um, you won't get a lot of foot traffic on that Sunday. Like if you were to have an open house, you wouldn't get much. Um, but with inventory being as low as it is, uh, people will go out and look at homes on that weekend. So I would not hesitate. Um, you know, get while the getting is good, I think is what I want to say. Um, you'll notice all the birds were gone on the golf course yesterday. <laughs> they flew home. Yes, Terry, this episode is bonkers. Trying to stay that way. Now, this part's interesting here. Very interesting comment by Janet Yellen, a Treasury Secretary. Says the banking meltdown could actually do the Fed's work for it. Lower inflation without sparking a recession. Isn't that convenient? So if banks get into trouble, we won't have to raise rates and we won't have a recession and uh, and things will just work its way out. And we're going to have a smooth landing. She's saying last month, the banking crisis in the U.S. could still hurt businesses by making loans harder to come by. But Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen believes it could also help the U.S. economy find its way to the Goldilocks zone where growth slows down just enough that inflation peters out, but not so much to collapse. We will see how that works out. Uh, let's see. They got a comment here that says, just keep acknowledging your wrong forecast in September. Yeah, I think uh, I probably had a wrong forecast. I don't try to go out too far. Um, so <laughs> I thought I thought when interest rates came up that we were really going to see things uh, tank, and they did. You know, we came down 15 to 17%. I didn't see this turnaround coming while rates were still in the sixes. So we learn as we go forward, but at least we keep you on track of it here, DT. I'm in New Home Sales, Sandtown Valley area. It's pretty consistent flow of traffic and sales. You guys are busy. I'm seeing that a lot. Um, are iBuyers being considered as distressed sales for appraisals? Would they include it or no? Um, they don't have enough traffic out there right, right now, not enough sales. I think they only had maybe 200 last month. I'd have to look. Um, but no, it's not not hurting appraisals. They're not calling them distressed um, because they're not a foreclosure. So Stephanie says, I've read yesterday the bank's credit squeeze may make it tighter to qualify for a loan. We're seeing some of that. Um, not seeing a lot. We're seeing more of it in the small business loans. Um, so we're not seeing, we're seeing a little bit tighter in the lending business for mortgages. Um, so not enough to knock people out. And most of the tightening that you see isn't, so much the credit score as it is the debt to income ratio. So the FHA will move that. And sometimes they move it on a daily basis. So if your debt to income ratio was okay at 43% last week, it might be down to 41% this week. So that's where the tightening comes from. Now, as far as migration, check this out. This is no surprise to anybody. This is showing where people are coming from. But this is... Um, Clicking on the wrong thing there. There we go. This is from Redfin, and they base this on where people are searching. So moving from are the blue lines, and moving to are the, what do I want to call this, kind of a almost brown line. So a lot of people in California are clicking homes in other states. I want to leave. I want to leave. And where they're clicking is Arizona and Texas. And it's always been that way. Even when I lived in California in the 90s and, and the economy started to tank, everybody was looking at Texas. And But the biggest winner in all of that, or loser, depending on how you look at it, was Idaho just seemed really popular. Let's go to Idaho. Their skies are blue because the smog was so bad in California. You were just looking at places to go that didn't have smog. But look at Florida. More than 43,000 people we're searching to move into Florida. Most of those are coming from right up here, up in New York. So I don't think the California people are looking to relocate to Florida. They're trying to get to some drier states. But this is interesting. This is kind of a, 
Montana, Wyoming, um, and uh, North Dakota, it's a wash. I, in fact, maybe that just means nobody's looking to move there. <laughs> I'm not clicking to see if there's anything going on in Montana. I don't have the, the bones for that kind of weather anymore. So as we go forward this week, I don't expect too much of a change. I think it will be a slow sale weekend. Um, as we get to, uh, I think Mother's Day is coming up, right? Um, if you look at the effect that holidays have, I mean, you can look over here and see Easter. See, that's that dip there. That little tiny dip is Easter. These are other major holidays there. So um, you'll see some some impact, but not a lot. I think if you're trying to put your home on the market this weekend, by all means do it because um, even if you don't have a good weekend, you'll have a good week. Um, and the first week is the time when you uh, when you see most of the eyeballs on your listing. After the first week, the, it kind of comes down unless you make a price adjustment. Keenan's asking if I got Starlink set up on my RV. I did. I got the big dish delivered, and I put it out, and I was experimenting with the – let me know if any of you out there have Starlink. Um, I find it interesting because I'm thinking – what difference does it make if you lift it up higher because it's going to a satellite? Does 10 feet make a difference? So I had it on the ground. I did a speed test. I put it on top of the picnic table, and it was faster. Not a lot, but it was faster. I go, that's only three feet. So I took it over, and I put it on the top of my pickup truck, and it was faster yet again. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and get the pole, and I'm going to mount it on my uh, – on my RV and shoot it to the moon, but uh, it's uh, it's pretty slick. I decided not to do a uh, live stream yesterday morning using it because I just wasn't quite prepared, but I'm going to get that way um, because when I travel, I'm still going to keep up these uh, these shows. So DT, stay, stay here and hang in with me. And uh, <laughs> as I travel up to Washington State, um, I'm leaving May 9th, but I'm going to continue to do the shows and Hey, let me, while I have you on here, let me see where I'm sitting as far as my million millions of views. Let's see. Let me check this out. I am sitting at drum roll nine, 996,491. So that means we're probably going to hit 1 million views. I think by Thursday, it will be party time. Um, Jason says, I'm not throwing in the towel yet. Months of inventory will go up late summer, early fall, and prices will experience dip number two. How big of a dip, Jason? It could, um, but we're going to have to see a reason for homes to get listed. And I know in your market up there, up in the Northwest, you'll probably see um, some listings come on in the summertime. Uh, Looking forward to your roadshow. Thanks. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, too. I'm getting a little nervous, though. It's coming up pretty quick. What do you think about Blackstone's $30 billion investment in rentals? Uh, that's a stretch. They're putting it out there. They feel like, uh, you know, rentals are the way to go. Um, it's their, They've backed away from buying single-family homes. Um, uh, you know, they're going to get the return on their money. We're seeing vacancy rates start to go up, but not at an alarming trend. We are seeing more and more build to rent communities coming in. I saw an article on that again this morning, and those are going up all over the valley. And when you think about it, um, if you're going to rent an apartment and you're paying, I'll just say 2000 bucks a month for a two bedroom, um, those build to rent homes are more attractive because nobody's above you. I mean, your neighbors are really close to you, but not like they are in an apartment. And you've got a little park that you can walk through. You've got a swimming pool. Um, some of them have little tiny backyards that are dog friendly. So I can see the appeal. Some of them that I've driven by just look horrendous, and I could, wouldn't want wouldn't to live there. But then again, you know, apartment living is not very attractive either especially when you hear footsteps i know my son had a place in tempe and this lady lived above him she went out of her way to be noisy and it drove him absolutely crazy and management well you know you can submit a complaint they wouldn't do a thing about it he finally had to move before he went bonkers terry jay says many factors will push up listings 
be a good video. I see prices down 10% from this year's peak. You going to swing a dollar on that one? I got one right here. I might as well lose another dollar, Jason. I lost one to Pat because I didn't think rates would come down. So we keep guessing. We'll see what happens. Well, look, everybody, we will see you again. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hope everybody has a fabulous Tuesday. Talk to you soon. Take care.